All right. Hello, everyone. It's so great to see you again here on this wonderful snow day in Dallas. My name is JC Hood, and I am the Public Programs Manager at the Roy Myers Children's Adventure Garden at the Dallas Arboretum. Today, our Discovery Lab Live is coming to you live from outside. <laughs> We've got two different experiments we're going to be doing today. If you didn't have your materials ready, don't worry. All of our activities we're doing today involve materials that you can find in your own home. The first thing that we are going to try today is bubbles. Now, normally you think of bubbles as being a summer activity, but we're going to try something a little bit different today. I'm going to take a little bit of bubble solution. I'm going to put it on my finger, then I'm going to add it here to the rail. It's already a little wet because the snow has been melting, but I'm gonna add some extra solution. All right, now that we've got the rail soaked up, I'm going to take my bubble wand and I'm gonna blow a bubble and try and get it to land right here on the rail. If you need to, whoops, you can try and catch your bubbles and place them on the rail or just blow from right here. Oops, need a little bit more bubble solution. All right. Now we're going to let the bubble sit there and I want you to observe it. What do you notice about the bubble? Do you see anything unusual happening? Maybe different colors or patterns than you normally see. Hmm, interesting. We're going to let that bubble sit there for a little bit and see if we notice any changes. It's a pretty chilly day out here, and I'm curious if you know what bubbles are made of. Hmm. I think I heard somebody say water. Oh, very good. Oh, soap too. Awesome. <laughs> and air. Yeah. Bubbles are made from three things. A gas, some type of air surrounded by a liquid like water with soap, a surfactant. It allows the water to stretch apart and make awesome bubbles. Now this one's pretty cool because I'm noticing it's starting to look a little bit different. I'm gonna see if we can blow a little bit smaller bubble on some snow and see what happens. All right, I'm gonna put some snow up here on my railing. Here we go, I'm just gonna place it gently right there. And I'm gonna blow a little bubble right here. Whoops, popped a little bit. Let's try again. All right, whoops, gotta catch it. Right, let's see if we can get it to sit right there. All right, I'm gonna hold that bubble right there on the snow. Ooh, it's so windy today. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Now, if you let your bubble sit out here long enough, that water is going to begin to freeze. That's right. Does anybody know at what temperature water freezes? Hmm. Oh, I bet you know. It's 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. And that's why we're seeing a lot of this snow and ice outside not melting because our temperatures right now are below that 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you leave your bubble out here long enough, it will turn into an awesome frozen bubble. How cool is that? <laughs> now the smaller bubble that you make, the faster it's going to freeze. My bubble here is a little bit large, so you might want to try smaller ones first. All right, so if you liked making frozen bubbles, we are now going to continue on to our next topic, ice. Now, there are a couple of different ways that you can create your ice to use for our next experiment. So a couple of ways that you could do it. My favorite is to use a balloon and fill it up with water so that it's about the size of your fist. If you don't have a balloon at home, you could try something different. I used a small bowl 
with some water in it to try and freeze here. You can also use a Ziploc bag that has been taped shut. Or what I used is actually a frozen water bottle. And that's what I'm going to be using today. So what I'm going to do now is head back inside, grab my ice, and we're going to do some icy investigations. So if you'll hold on for about 30 seconds, I'll be right back to your screens. See you in a little bit. All right, everyone, we are back. <laughs> oh, awesome. I'm able to actually see your comments now, and I'm so excited to say hello to you. Hi, Darlene and Sifa, Elliot. Hi, Tamiko, Lori, and oh, there's Tamiko again. You know what? It does feel like ice outside. <laughs> All right, friends. So what we're going to be doing now is taking a look at our ice. Now, this is mine that I used making a, using a frozen water bottle. And the first thing that we're going to do as scientists is we are going to observe our ice. So let's take a look at it. What do you notice about the color of the ice? Hmm. Interesting. I'm noticing it looks a little bit more solid color right here, but it's a little more clear around the edges. Can you see that? Hmm, that's curious. What do you notice about the way your ice feels? Is it smoother in different areas or breaking and cracking? <laughs> oh, hi, Sharon just joined. All right, everyone. So we're noticing some differences in color. Ooh, I also see some uh, bubbles right here. That's pretty cool as well. I'm curious what your eyes looks like around you. All right, everyone. Awesome observations. Now what we're going to do is take a look at that closer center one more time. I'm curious if you have an idea why you think the center looks cloudy but the edges here look clear. Hmm. Well, that has to do with how water freezes. Water actually freezes from the outside inward. And as the water freezes, those pure water crystals freezing are clear. The cloudiness you see is actually air and impurities. Oh, hi, Kelly. Thanks for watching with Mackenzie. That's cool that you made ice marbles from balloons. Oh, and now I see, let's see, uh, Akanksha is here as well. Awesome. Awesome. Yes, Elliot, it is cold. <laughs> All right. But like I said, that cloudiness in the middle is actually impurities and air that are the last thing to freeze because they're in the center. There's also a really cool phenomena you can see uh, if you get really up close, and it's almost like little rays of bubbles coming out from the center. It's really neat to see those different lines of the air trying to come out as the water is freezing. All right. So now that we've taken a look and observed our ice, I want to take a minute here and see what happens if we put other materials onto our ice. So I have three different materials we are going to be using today. 
The first one I have here is some soil or sand. So I'm just gonna take some of my soil and I am going to put it down here on this end of my eyes. So I'm just gonna put a pinch or two. If you've got some soil or sand, you can do this along with us as well. Just put it right on there and we're going to let it sit for a little bit. All right, now the next material I have is sugar. So I'm going to also take another pinch of sugar and add that on right here. All right, so again, just a pinch. So I'm just gonna put my pinch of sugar right here in the middle, leave it in a nice little pile. All right. And finally, the last thing I'm going to do is add some salt. All right. So again, just gonna take a pinch here. Oops, put a little in my hand. And then pinch this off, put it right here at the top. It's interesting, the salt, I can't see it as well as the sugar. Hmm, it looks the same in my hand, but when I sprinkle it on the ice, I can't see it. Hmm, I wonder why that is. So as we're letting this sit here, I'm curious if anyone watching has a guess as to what you think will happen. In science, when we are trying an experiment like this, our guess of what we think is going to happen is called our hypothesis. It's just our best guess with our experiment. So the question we're trying to see is what will happen if we add other substances on top of ice? We tried three different variables, soil or sand, sugar, and salt. And now it's time to make our guess or hypothesis. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, I'm noticing something interesting. There's beginning to be spots of water here on my tray. Hmm, I wonder what's causing that. Oh, interesting. There seems to be drops of water coming off of the top of my water bottle. I'm gonna put some more salt here. Oh, spread it around a little bit. Wow, look at all the water that's there on my tray now. I wonder where all of that is coming from. It might be a little bit hard to see, so I'm going to see if I can use a light whoops, to shine it and make this a little bit brighter for you. So let's try this out. Let me see if I can shine my light make it brighter for you. All right. Okay, so here we've got our soil. Hmm, doesn't seem to be doing much. We've got our sugar. Okay, it's still there. But that salt still just looks like a lot. Whoa, there's so much water on my tray now. Which one do you think is causing the change? <gasps> Whoa. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna take off my soil here. I'm going to take off my sugar and I'm gonna brush off. Huh, it's really hard for me to brush off the salt. I wonder why that is. Do you have any guesses why it's so difficult for me to brush off the salt? And why do you think that my ice is melting so quickly now? Hmm, I didn't have any food coloring today. If you have food coloring, this is the best thing to use for it. But I'm going to take some juice here that's uh, a bright color and I'm gonna see if I pour that onto the ice, if I can see a little bit better where the water is running down. Now I'm noticing here at the top where I poured it, that there are little lines beginning to form and there are actually holes in the ice now. 
this is a great time for you to be able to see how the top up here was clear. But if you notice here where, sorry, it's a little bit bright, where my salt was, the side is actually becoming flat now right here. Salt is unique. When we add it to water, it actually lowers the freezing temperature of water. Now, do you remember what we said is the temperature at which water freezes? Hmm, do you remember from earlier? <laughs> Very good. 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. Awesome. So when we add the salt here, it actually lowers the temperature at which it will freeze and causes the ice to melt like it did here on the tray. So do you think that salt could be useful to us right now while it's so cold outside? Hmm, I wonder what we could use the salt for. Hmm, oh, I know. We could use it to melt the ice outside. Maybe if you have a porch or a driveway that's really icy, you could put the salt out there to help melt the ice. Oh, that's so smart. Now, you may notice that sometimes here in Texas, there's a lot of sand out on the roads. That is because sand can help increase traction on the roads. Now, if you notice, it's pretty slippery right here, right? But if I add my soil to the top of here, my finger doesn't rub across quite as easily as it did earlier. If you notice, it's got a little more grip to it, more traction. And so that's why sanding our roads can help make it a little bit safer to drive, but it doesn't necessarily melt the ice the way that salt will. How cool is that? <laughs> now, I'm curious, if you were able to put food coloring down the lines of your ice sphere, did you notice anything about what it looks like? I think that all of the little lines coming down look like tiny rivers and streams. What I think is really cool is these rivers and streams look a lot like the moon Europa. Have you ever heard of the moon Europa? It's one of the Galilean moons. That means it's a moon of Jupiter that was discovered by Galileo. I'm going to see if I can share a quick video or picture, I mean, with you. All right. So this is, oh, here we go. Pull it up. So this is the moon Europa. What do you notice about its surface? Oh, yeah, the colors are very interesting. I also like to notice the lines right here. These lines, scientists believe, occurred when warm ice came up from the surface of the moon and created these little streams and river-like lines, just like we saw on the ice we experimented with today. How interesting is that? Something we made today looks like a moon of Jupiter. <laughs> awesome. All right, friends, I'm gonna switch over a camera here so I can say hello to you. All right, hi everyone. I'm gonna pop over here. All right, so I wanted to finish up today by talking a little bit about weathering and erosion. So those two things are what create a lot of our rivers and streams here on Earth. And a lot of times that can happen by melting water from mountaintops, the snow melting down and creating rivers and streams. It can also happen just around here 
uh, when soil is picked up and moved along by the rivers and streams, carving out their pathways through the earth. Same thing happens uh, on the, hopefully, on the moon of uh, Europa if our scientists are correct. I also have to give a quick shout out to Stacy who's watching. Hi, that's actually my mom. And uh, finally, the last thing that I wanted to touch on today was if you didn't have a chance to prepare your materials for this experiment, you can still try it later. You can always watch replays of our Discovery Lab live here on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch uh, under the hashtag RNCAG for the Roy Myers Children's Adventure Garden. So uh, if you want to continue learning about this at home, I've got two different experiments that you can try after today. So what you can do is take your ice here, and I want you to try putting it in a big bowl or container of water and see what happens. Do you think that the ice will float or sink? They're both made from water. It's just one is a solid ice and water is a liquid. So if they're made from the same thing, but they're two different states of matter, what do you think will happen? Do just like we did earlier and make a hypothesis or a guess before you try the experiment. Oh, I want to say hello to the Mathers and say thank you for playing with the snow today with us. Uh, the second experiment that you could try is when you are creating your ice spheres. Try using one balloon with cold water and then the other balloon with warm or hot water. And then make a chart and check and see how frozen your water is every morning and evening while the balloons are freezing. Which one do you think will freeze faster, the hot water or the cold water? Uh, one of the things you will discover if you do a little Googling is that this is called the Mpemba effect, which is named after a young Tanzanian boy who was making ice cream at school and discovered the temperature of the ice cream uh, mix made a difference in how fast it Rose. So uh, if you'd like to try this at home, that's a couple of different options to continue learning this week while we're all snowed in a little bit here in Dallas. I hope you had fun with this at home Discovery Lab live. I know that I did, but I will also be very happy to be back in the children's garden out with nature once everything has melted down a little bit. All right. We are hoping to reopen the Children's Adventure Garden this weekend. However, keep a lookout for our social media accounts and website just to make sure that everything is still safe and opening on time. Like I said, my name is JC Hood and I'm signing off from at home instead of the Rory Myers Children's Adventure Garden at the Dallas Arboretum. All right. Bye, Cooper and Savannah, and bye, everyone. I hope you had fun learning at home. Bye-bye.